Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is the first episode of the connecting the engine and getting it working parts of this whole build. So what I have in front of me right here is a Motronic 4.3 engine wiring harness. This is a very common engine wiring harness for the Volvo 850 turbo engine. We also have a Motronic 4.3 engine management system. Today I thought we would do the pin outs. So we're gonna find out what all these pins go to on the engine from the ECU. All right, so let's get started. And I don't think that anyone is surprised that I'm bring out, bringing out these books. Finding information is not hard. Finding correct information is, is starting to get pretty hard. There's like too much information online. I think that these books are like as solid as you can get it. Like they, they don't lie. So these are the books that I like to use when doing electrics. Uh, schematics trying to figure you know electric things out so we're going to be using mainly this one today uh, this one right here basically just explains how the Motronic 4.3 works um, some fault codes how to check things if it doesn't work blah 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 a very good book but it's more for fault tracing not so much for how to pull the wires this book right here is for the Volvo 740 this is very good because here we have all the schematics. So we're going to get to this one in a later episode where we try to get the uh, Volvo 850 wiring harness into the Volvo 740. That's when we're going to use this one. But today we're going to be focusing on this because we're going to be checking out the harness that I got and kind of, do you say cross-reference? I don't really know. Uh, but we're going to look at the schematics here and we're going to make sure that all the pinouts go to the corresponding sensors and whatnot. And just to see that, you know, the wiring harness is complete, that it works and it ain't broken. So we're gonna go through all of this. So I say, let's get started because that's the best way. Let's just jump right into it. Um, we're gonna start with pin number one. So let me get a few things ready here and we'll get right on it. I don't know if I mentioned it, but we're gonna be stress testing the uh, harness a little bit, not too much. So we have this uh, transformer or whatever you wanna call this thing. It'll put out three amps, 50, uh, 12 volts. Okay, three amps, 12 volts. So it's enough to turn this light on. And what that does is it basically puts a higher current through the wire. And when you do that, you kind of stress the wire so if there was any faults, um, like any, you know, like say this connection wouldn't have been so good. Uh, let's say it would have a lot of oxidization in here, then the light wouldn't light up. You know, some guys like to use this thing with the, uh, with the bleeping thing, continuity check. You know, you get that sound. So let's say you measure this wire right here and it's gonna, it's gonna beep because, you know, it's a connection. But it'll beep even if this is, you know, all murky inside, you know? Uh, even if it is all oxidized, it's still gonna make that beeping sound. And that will kind of deceive you into thinking that it works when it actually doesn't. Which is why when I got things like this, when, there are, when there's nothing connected to the harness, which is very important, do not have the, uh, do not have the ECU connected while pushing a current through because you won't know what you're pushing the current into. But if you have a naked uh, wiring harness like this, yes, I would recommend um, trying to push, you know, some amperage through the wires just to make sure that they are all right. It'll make sense in two seconds. All right. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. You guys are going to have to listen to that sound a little bit. And uh, we're going to put this at 12 volts, put that at 12 volts and then we'll just max this. And yeah, I guess you could use a car battery for this, but the problem with the car battery is uh, it's going to put out, you know, hundreds of amperes if you, if you short it out. This transformer is going to, like, it's going to stop because it'll know that, okay, this is a short, but nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to catch on fire. So, I mean, if you... <laughs> If you want to go with the battery solution, that's fine, but you got to be really careful because you can set things on fire because of the enormous amounts of amperage, okay? But this, you know, it'll turn the light on. You can kind of see 
which one would be better? So this one would be better. This is kind of weak. I would have liked maybe five amps to push through this light. This is it's quite, I think it's 55 watts. So we're kind of pushing the limit there. there. Um, but yeah, it'll work for what we need. And this produces a lot of heat. Three amps of current should be enough to check the wiring. I'll put a link in the description for one of these. Uh, the, they are very handy, actually. I've used it several times for all kinds of projects. I hope you guys can see this. I can't really tell. So we're going to start off with pin number one. Now we have two different um, connectors on this thing. We have A and B. And they're both in this same holder, as you can see right here. So this would be A. This one is 95% of the engine management uh, is going to be in connector A. And then we have connector B right here. This is going to be mostly your outputs to the car. Uh, can't really mention anything right now. We'll get to it. But this will basically be everything that goes to like dials and, and indicators, maybe the OBD connection, stuff like that. It's going to be in this connector. All right. And we're going to start off with this connector right here. So how do we find pin number one in this connector? So what you can do is you can actually look really close here. You can see that it has numbers. So it says 1, 15, and 30. So you have 1, and it goes this way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, blah, blah, blah. 30, 31, and so on. Okay? And that's individual for like A and B. So this one has 1 through 40 something. This one has 1 through 40 something. So it's not like all of these at once. Sometimes you might get that, but not in this case. Okay, so let's start off with pin number one. All right, so we take our positive lead, we'll stick it into pin number one, but in this case, we don't have anything in pin number one. Okay, so we don't have anything in pin number one. Let's check it in the schematics. Should we have a pin number one? So we take a look, this is connector A, so we'll look. Nope, there is not an output pin on number one. So we don't have that. We do have a number two though. So let's put this thing in number two. We just move it over. Number two, all right. Then we look back here, two. Okay, this comes from 724. And we look up in this lookup table right here. 724, what is 724? 724 is knock sensor front all right so knock sensor front uh, position one so let's find that now you're just gonna have to kind of guess which one is the knock sensor um i kind of know where they are or where they should be yeah, this one looks like the knock sensors because I know you have a couple of grounds in there as well. So then you just take your negative one and you just pin it. And there we go. There we have a connection. So now we have a connection from pin number two to output pin number one right here. And we can just check that to make sure. You can look here. It says number one, so you have number one, number two, and this one is number one. So everything checks out. That way, now we know that that connector right there is the front knock sensor. Front knock sensor. Great. So then you can draw down here, okay? Pin number one. Empty. Pin number two. Uh, knock sensor. <clears throat> I usually like to draw where it goes. So I'm going to say that it goes to pin uh, one. Front knock sensor. That way I know pin number two on the ECU goes to pin number one on the front knock sensor. Great, moving on. 
And to number three. And we'll check out here again. Number three. Let's see if we can find a number three. Okay, so this goes to pin number one on 717. So let's look up here. What is 717? 717 is engine temp sensor. Okay. So 717 is engine temp sensor. It's going to be a connector with four connectors on it. Really? 717? That can't be right. No, sorry. 717. Yeah, that didn't make any sense because I know the engine temp sensor is only two uh, pins. 717 is the airflow meter. Right there, airflow meter. Above that is the uh, engine temp sensor. Anyway, the airflow meter. So that one should go to pin number one on the airflow meter. Now the airflow meter is kind of a unique connector because it's pretty big. Uh, so we should be able to find it pretty quickly here. I would say it's this one because the cable is very long. It's got four connectors. So in theory, we should light that light up when we pin number one here. And we do. All right. So that is okay. Uh, pin number three on the ECU side goes to pin, pin one, airflow meter in Swedish. All right. And we can go ahead and we can uh, LMM, Luftmassemeter. Go ahead and take that. No. All right, moving on, number four. So let's see, number four. Connector number A is gonna be a white one going to 717 again. So we, this will go to pin number four on the airflow meter. So it should be this one. Yep, pin. Four L M M. All right. And then we have the number five. Moving on. Uh, pin number five goes to uh, number two on the airflow meter. Yes, we can confirm that. Pin two. L M M number six. Let's see here. Uh, okay, seven twenty-five. Let's see here. Seven twenty-five. Impulse sensor, which is a uh, engine speed sensor. So it should go to pin number two on the engine speed sensor. Now, where can the engine speed sensor be? All right, so it's right here. So it should be pin number six, pin number six. It should go to the number two. And it doesn't, it goes to number one. Pin one. Uh, crank. There could be multiple reasons for this. Maybe it's been in an automatic or something. Uh, I know that kind of depending on what kind of flywheel you have, pick up something like that. I can't really remember it right now, but sometimes you gotta switch these two uh, depending on something. I, I, I'm really gonna let it be unsaid, but that's not uncommon. Um, but it's good to mention that they are switched. just for future reference, like if you run into trouble. All right, so let's move this to number seven. Number seven, don't forget to move that. I forgot to move that earlier. Number seven. Mm -mm. And that goes, number seven goes to connector 1B on 211. 
211 is relay engine fan. That should be up here. So I'm guessing it is going to be one of these. All right. So it should go to 1B. So I am guessing this one. Yep. It's a bit of an odd connector here, so it doesn't fit very well. But there you go. Pin seven goes to uh, pin one, one B on the electric fan relay. All right. So I'm going to continue here and kind of finish all this up. Just checking each one, each and every one as I go along like this and we'll be right back. All right. So my paper got a little bit dirty, so I have to kind of start over, <laughs> but here we go. Here is uh, all the pins and where they go to on connector a. So pin one is empty. Pin two goes to pin one on the front knock sensor. Number three goes to pin one on the air. I don't need to tell you guys. Just look at it. Look at it. You guys see that? I don't think you can see that, but maybe you can. Yeah, you can. I have it kind of continues on the other side. All right. So let's get started on connector B. Okay, so connector B is going to be on the other side here. So we're in pin five. So let's look for pin number five. Yeah. Pin number five goes to 422. 422 is electronic immobilizer. That's that is interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see where this goes. Number five. It, well, I guess it also goes to the OBD. But that's USA and Canada. So it shouldn't go there. It's a little bit odd. I'm going to have to see where that goes. Um, hmm. Weird. It's a yellow and black, maybe. I got a bad feeling about this now. Oh crap. All right. This could prove a little problematic, which means that this actually went to the mobilizer, maybe, and they just cut it off, which means that this ECU might still very much be uh, blocked in the immobilizer, but we're gonna fix that, don't worry. You can go into the ECU and fix that, get rid of that. Pin to immobilizer. Pin number six. Let's go to pin number six. Number six. Twenty four fifteen. That's not right. So that will go to two things, kind of depending on what market it is. That's why these are dotted. It's like on some markets, these will exist. Uh, eight three. Let's see what that is. Okay, so that goes to the AC, and that's the AC activation. You can see it's dotted because the car might not have AC. We don't have AC, so we're gonna we're not gonna worry about that. But it also goes to 753, which is 
the AC, pressostat. Pressostat is not what it's called in English. Uh, the pressure sensor for the AC, we don't have that either. So we're not gonna bother with number six. Pin number six, uh, AC. We're just gonna deal with that. Number seven, pin number seven. Let's move that over. That one is kind of bent as well. I'm gonna have to get some of these. Uh, I'm gonna have to repin those because that is not looking too good. All right, pin number seven. Okay, this goes to some kind of indicator. Um, 10, 106, 10, One oh six. Okay, so that's the check engine light. That's the check engine light. Check engine. All right, that's a grounded wire. That's good to know. So pin number seven is check engine light. It'll be good, good to know when we reconnect this to the 740, because then we'll just attach that. Uh, pin number eight. It's empty. Pin number nine. Look at pin number nine. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. AC pressure. Nope, we don't need that. Seven, eight. Uh, yeah, screw that. Ten, empty. Eleven. Let's look at eleven. Goes to four forty four. is tend slut steg och tändspole. So that's ignition coil. I'm just gonna type ignition here. Um, number 11. So let's see where that one goes on here. That can be a little bit interesting because I think I know where that goes. Or do I? I think it's gonna wind up here. Yep. What pin is that? <laughs> It goes to the Jürgen box. Uh, Jürgen box, that is, uh, where is it? Here it is. All right, so this is a Jürgen box. Don't ask me too much about this because I like, okay. The old Volvo 850 turbo uh, engine. It does not have coil on plug. The newer engines, like the one I have in here, I think it's from like 1990. It was when they started with the ME7 electronics. I think it was in 1998 or 99. They started using coil on plugs. This little box made by a guy called Jürgen uh, on a forum. So he made this on a forum. Like, I don't know. 10 years back, probably even more. I don't know if he still makes these, um, which is unfortunate, but this is a little box that will basically turn this distributor style uh, ignition system into a coil on plug system instead. How that works, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to ask him. I have reached out to him. He has not answered. I know that a lot of people have reached out to him and haven't gotten any answers. So I don't think he wants anything to do with this anymore. I'm not sure. 
but I think it's a genius thing and I think you should definitely keep on going with these, but that's not really up to me, is it? But that's what this is. There's very limited amount of information about these things, but I'm going to try to get the pinouts and pin-ins for this as well. I'm just going to have to vacuum clean the internet and see if I can find anything. And if I do, I'll put that on the screen right now. If I find anything. All right. Uh, pin number 11 goes to that box anyway. All right. So now we know that. We have four wires going to this thing. Just so you all know. And there might be, yeah, there's four inputs into this thing. And then we have outputs for the coils. All right, moving on to number 12, which is empty. I'm just gonna write an E, because there's a lot of empty ones here. 13, 14, empty. 15, 16, 17, 18. There you are, right there, all right. So let's see, that goes to, uh, what is that? Uh, I don't know what that is, A7. There we go, combination, here we go. A7, yellow, black. Okay, where does it go? Oh, here we go, A7. Okay, so that is A7, is a speedometer output. Digital speedometer output, 12 pulses per revolution. Okay, so that is speedometer output. And if we look here, yeah, it is an input. So that, that is something that the engine management unit is reading which is interesting. I wonder how we're gonna get that signal. 12 pulses per revolution, I'll have to remember that. And see, I don't think the, I don't think the rear end in the Volvo 740 puts out 12 pulses. Yeah, that is definitely something I'm gonna have to think about. It has two as well. Number six is 48 pulses. Pin number six in A here, the green white is supposedly 48 pulses. That could be interesting to notice. I'm just talking to myself right now. It should be very boring this episode, but I mean, that is, to me, that's very interesting to find out that the speedometer or the instrument cluster of Evolvo 850 has two speedometer pulse outputs. Yep, I'm a little bit weird like that, but that's fine. Moving on, 19. Do we have anything in 19? No, we don't. So, actually, let's see. Let's see where that went. So that should come out here somewhere then, I guess. Yeah. Digital Speedo. So 21 is the next. Let's see here, 21. Where do you go? Uh, 21. And yeah, that is the RPM gauge. A11. A11. Oh, Tom's math that RPM input. All right, so that was kind of the pins and and the connectors on the Motronic 4.3. Now you know I'm not going to use number six. I'm not going to use number nine. Hmm. I will have to look into this freaking immobilizer thing. Not really sure. I'm gonna have to look up the speedometer thing. Look up. Uh, RPM output. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Mm, pin one fuel pump. We're not gonna use that. We're not gonna use that. P 
1938 was connected to something. Oh, that's actually, that's actually not connected to anything. So, yeah, we're not going to use that either. And, you know, we're not going to use a trip computer. Uh, turbo adjustment while, wow. yeah, we will be using that, most likely. We're not going to use the auto gearbox either. So yeah, there's not a lot of pins to be used on connector B. But on connector A, there is several more. All right, you guys, that's it for episode one. Uh, catch me up in episode two when we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this with sensors and some of that stuff and putting all of this onto an engine. And I'll show you kind of where to connect everything. I'll see you guys in the next video. How do you get? Hi.